So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same scenario that we just did, the fifth scenario. Notice how I have all of the transactions written out over here. I have the balance sheet at the beginning of the period. But instead of showing you how these transactions flow through financial statements, I'm now going to show you how they flow through equations. And to show you how that works, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the equation for the balance sheet. So we know that a balance sheet assets equals liabilities plus equity. However, notice that we can get into a little bit more detail here with this equation. So we know that assets is going to equal liabilities, but this equity portion, let's split it up into capital plus retain earnings like that. And so notice that from here, remember a balance sheet is a snapshot of the company at a specific point in time. So notice that we can take this information here on the balance sheet, which is at a snapshot at a point in time, November 1st, and we can fill in this information with this equation. So notice how the assets, it's 18,100. If we add the cash and the machine, we got the liabilities, it's only a loan of 5,000. Then we got the capital of 10,000. And then we got the retained earnings for 3,100. And so this equation here, I'm going to expand on as the video goes on, but notice how the left side and the right side balance here for this equation. And it's always going to balance throughout this video. So I wanna make a note of that. That whatever equations that I'm gonna put up on the board, they're always gonna balance on the left and right side. Notice that if we add this whole right side up, it's 18,100 and then the left side is 18,100. So this here represents the balance sheet, that's the equation, but this here is gonna be at the beginning of the period. And so in this case, it is November 1st. But what's gonna happen within November 1st. Well, what's going to happen is that these accounts are going to start changing. And so what we can do now for within the period, which I'm going to show here, is we can create an equation saying that the change in assets is equal to the change in liabilities plus the change in capital plus the change in retained earnings like that. So I'm going to split these off here because this is at the beginning of the period. Here it's going to be within the period and then we're going to finish off with the balance sheet at the end of the period and it's going to be in this format again. But within it's these changes here. Change of assets equals change in liabilities plus change in capital plus change in retained earnings. However, we can get into even more detail here, especially with this part, with this change in retain earnings. And how are retain earnings changing throughout the period? Well, if you remember from the statement of retain earnings, what's happening is we have a beginning retain earnings account. And then what we're doing is we're adding net income, which comes from the income statement. And then we are subtracting dividends to get our ending retain earnings. So from the statement of retain earnings, notice that these two portions here, this net income minus this dividends, this is the change in retain earnings within the period that's happening, right? We're starting with beginning retain earnings then we're gonna have a change in retain earnings and then we're gonna end up with our ending retain earnings. And then we can even go into more detail because this net income, remember it's flowing from the income statement and the income statement is what? It's revenue minus expenses. Sorry, let's uh, actually put it vertically. So we got revenue minus expenses equals net income. And then that from the income statement is flowing right there. So we can get into even more detail here. Instead of writing net income, what we can say here is we have beginning retained earnings plus revenue <coughs> minus expenses minus dividends 
Because remember, revenue minus expenses is that net income, and that's going to give us our ending retain earnings. And so now this represents that change in retained earnings, the revenue minus expenses minus dividends. And this is not the proper format for a statement of retained earnings. The revenue and expenses wouldn't be there. But this is not the statement anymore. I'm just sort of going into more detail for this portion, this change in retained earnings, because we're going to expand on this equation here. Right, so revenue minus expenses minus dividends, that's the change in retained earnings. So we can actually now expand this equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite it. Actually, I'll just rewrite it up here. I'm gonna have the change in assets equals the change in liabilities plus the change in capital. But instead of writing the change in retained earnings, I'm now gonna write plus revenue minus expenses, minus dividends. I put them in short form to uh, save some room on the whiteboard, right? So now I took that change in retained earnings and expressed it as revenue minus expenses, minus dividends. And so now what we can do is we can go through these transactions, which is going to be within the period. So it's going to change all of those accounts. Okay, and now we can classify or we can take these transactions and put them in the proper spots in this equation. So now that we got that equation for within the period in a little bit more detail, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go through these transactions one by one and show you where each transaction fits on this equation and what's going to be changing. So what I did was I created these barriers between each of these accounts here, and I'm gonna show you where everything fits. So starting with transaction one, we bought ingredients for $1,000. So what accounts are gonna be affected with transaction one? Well, we bought the ingredients for cash. So what happened was we spent cash. So cash is an asset. So our cash went down by $1,000. And then remember the left side and the right side have to balance. So if this is negative 1,000, this has to be netted out somehow on this equation. So we spent $1,000 cash and now we received ingredients. And remember, ingredients, that gets capitalized in inventory before we use it to make revenue, which is going to be in the second transaction. And so what happens is we spend cash for $1,000 and we received ingredients for $1,000. And so our assets went down because of the spending of cash, but then they went back up because we received those ingredients. And we showed that in the previous video visually on the financial statement on the balance sheet. And so this here in the equation represents that transaction one right there. Okay, now let's move on to transaction two. Transaction two, we use $600 of the ingredients to make $7,000 in revenue. So notice transaction two, it's actually two separate transactions. I mentioned that in the previous video as well. So I'm actually going to split this into 2A and 2B on this chart here. So I'm first going to deal with the revenue, the $7,000 of revenue. So $7,000 of revenue, we receive $7,000 of cash. So we know that our assets went up by $7,000 right here. And then what else went up? Well, notice we have this revenue account here. Right, that $7,000 of uh, revenue f uh, flowed into the income statement as we showed in the previous video. So on this equation here, this is going to be 7000 right here. That went up. And so notice how this and this are balancing because this equals this plus that plus that minus this minus that. So we got this plus 7000 here plus 7000 here and they're both on opposite sides of this equal sign. Remember, this equal sign is going to carry over all the way down here. Okay, so this here, I'm going to circle. This is going to be transaction two. I'm going to call it 2A 
because it's only half of that second transaction. Now, this $600 we have to account for as well. So we used $600 of ingredients to make that $7,000 in revenue. Now, if you remember from the previous video when we went through this transaction, what happened was $600 came out of that ingredients account. So the assets went down by $600. We used $600 of those ingredients. And then where did that $600, so it affected the balance sheet. What else did it affect? It affected the income statement. It was an expense. And so that $600 is going to go here as well. Now you may be asking yourself, we got a negative here and we have a positive. So notice how they're not balancing. But remember that we're always going to be subtracting this column, subtracting this column. There's a minus here, a minus here. So there's going to be like a minus separating those columns here. So even though I put plus 600, it's $600 of an expense and we're subtracting whatever is going to be in this column. We're going to be subtracting whatever is in this dividends column as well, right? So they do in fact end up balancing. This is like negative 600 here. All right, so that ends up being, let's call it transaction 2B. Right, so I took this second transaction, split it up into these two right here. And now what we have is, uh, notice how transactions 3, 4, and 5, they're all going to be very similar because the rent, interest, and utilities, they're all expenses that are all being paid with cash. Starting with transaction three, what's happening is we are spending $2,000 cash. So our assets are going down. And then that is an expense. So that 2000 is going to be right here as well. Right, and it's plus 2000, but we're subtracting that column. So it is going to net out with this. So this here, this transaction is going to end up being transaction three. And then same thing with the interest and utility. So the interest, we are spending $100. That's going to be an expense. So this is going to be $100. You know what? I'll put these minus signs here. So that there is going to be transaction four. And then transaction five, the utilities. We got uh, $400, so we're spending $400, so our assets are going down by $400. We're um, paying the utilities with cash, and then this is going to be $400, so that's going to be a minus as well. Right, so that there would end up being transaction five. And then transaction six and seven. So transaction six, we paid down the loan of $700. Paid down the loan of 700. So again, our cash is going down by 700. So our assets are gonna go down. But now notice that we're paying down the loan, which is a liability. So now this column is gonna be affected. And our liabilities, if we're paying down a loan, it means our liabilities are going down. So this here is gonna be negative. 700 like that okay so this here is going to end up being transaction six right and we had to put a negative here because remember we're taking this column and adding it to the rest of these columns so this column gets added to this one to this one and then these get subtracted right so these positives end up being negatives but because we're adding this column this column is positive, quote unquote. For it to balance, we've got to put a negative here, meaning the liabilities are going down. All right, so that's going to be transaction six. And then a dividend of $900. We are paying that dividend with cash. So that's going to be minus 900. The assets are going down by 900. And then notice that the dividend is the last column. If I extend this column over here. Um, and that's going to be 900. And remember, we're subtracting this column here. So I put a plus 900 in, uh, in that column right there. Right, so minus 900, minus 900. Those balance out. And so that there ends up being transaction seven. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that beginning balance sheet 
And then we have all these changes within the period. So I'm actually going to split this up here. So we got the beginning, the beginning balance sheet. We got the changes. So all of this here between these two lines is within the period or within November. And then after the changes, we're going to end up with our ending balance sheet. So our ending balance sheet is going to be in this same format. We're going to have our assets equals our liabilities plus our capital plus our retain earnings. Okay, so this here is going to be November 30th or the end of the period. Whatever question you're doing this year, this bottom portion is gonna be the end of the period. So we've got the beginning of the period, within the period, and then at the end. And the way we get these numbers is we simply just net out the columns. So if we take this 18,100, and then we subtract and add all of these respective numbers, what we, we would end up with when you do that is 20,400 which is the total assets that we ended up with in the previous video when we did this same scenario. These um, assets were split up on the balance sheet. I think we had like cash of 12,000 and then we had the machine was 8,000 and then um, there was ingredients of 400, but if you add all of them up, they would be 20,400 and we got that by doing all this here. And then the liabilities, we started with 5,000, go down the column, subtracting 700. So this ended up being 4,300. The capital, notice there was no change in capital. There was no paid in capital within uh, November. So it still stays as 10,000. And the retained earnings, this, this one's a little weird because all three of these columns represents the change in retained earnings. So it's basically this value but then you got to net it out with all of these numbers in these three columns. So you take the 3,100, add the 700, subtract 600, subtract 2,000, et cetera, et cetera. But when you net this and all of these numbers out in the last three columns, you would end up getting uh, 6,100 like that. And so notice that this here ends up being our ending balance sheet and it's the exact same numbers that we got in the previous video when we did the same scenario.